Which robot vacuum truly deserves the title of flagship? My name is Jamie Andrews, and in this video, we'll pit the Roborock Sayros 10 against the Roborock Sayros 10R to determine which one comes out on top and which one falls short. If you haven't watched my first video where I broke down the specs of both of these units, I'll link it both above and in the description below. Roborock has upgraded the Sayros 10's object avoidance system to Reactive AI 3.0. An evolution of last year's S8 Max-V Ultra model. This version introduces a new vertical side light sensor, which did not help it with avoiding the cord. It also got a bit too close to the sock. I had high hopes for the Sayros 10R, especially with its advanced Starsight 2.0 system. This system is identical to the one I tested on the Curivo Slim, but like the Sayros 10, it incorporates a vertical side light sensor. However, it did get a bit too close to a few objects and bulldozed right over the cord as if it wasn't even there. For 2025, I introduced a second object avoidance test. While the Sayros 10 successfully avoided the cord in the first test, it failed to do so this time. On a bright side, it did steer clear of the pet waste samples. The Sayros 10R faced the same test with identical results. It avoided the fake pet waste samples, but completely disregarded the USB cord. Next up is the carpet pickup test. I scattered 54 grams of colored rice on carpet and set the robots to max plus vacuum mode. With an impressive 22,000 pascals of suction power, the Sayros 10 delivered as expected, picking up 53 grams or 98%. The Sayros 10R, with its slightly less powerful vacuum motor, rated at 19,000 pascals, fell just short of the Sayros 10's performance, collecting only 52 grams or 96%, which is still a good score. The next test is the hard floor pickup challenge, where I scattered 130 grams of cat litter on tile floor and set the vacuum motors to max plus mode, giving each robot a single pass. The Sayros 10 performed impressively, picking up 125 grams or 96%, which is a strong score. Next, I tested the Sayros 10R. With its slightly lower suction power, I expected it to be ranked behind the Sayros 10, and as anticipated, it collected 123 grams or 94%. While that's 2 grams less than the Sayros 10, it's still above the channel average of 91%. When it comes to mopping, these two robots couldn't be more different making the next test particularly intriguing. For my standard mopping test, I applied baked on hot sauce to a tile floor and set the water output to the highest level. I enabled deep mopping mode as well. The Sayros 10 truly excelled in this challenge, and not only acing the test, but nearly completing it in just one pass. An impressive achievement. As for the Sayros 10R, it features a mopping system similar to the QRevo series utilizing two rotating mopping pads. In this test, the Sayros 10R also succeeded in removing all of the hot sauce. However, it required more passes to achieve the same results compared to the Sayros 10. Just like their mopping systems, the docks for these two robots are notably different in how they clean the mopping pads. To determine which one performs better, I tested their pad cleaning capabilities after the first run of the mopping test, starting with the Sayros 10. After a single wash in the dock, the results were solid and pretty good overall. A second wash removed a little bit more of the residue. The Sayros 10R's pads, initially in the same condition as the Sayros 10's, performed just as well after a single wash, possibly even slightly better. After a second cleaning cycle, the 10R's pads came out marginally cleaner. Both docks use hot water to clean the mopping pads, so we decided to test Roborock's claim of reaching 176 degrees Fahrenheit, starting with the Sayros 10. Upon testing, I measured the water output and found a peak temperature of just 128 degrees Fahrenheit. The water temperature began around 70 degrees Fahrenheit and gradually climbed to its peak. In my opinion, anything above 120 degrees Fahrenheit qualifies as hot water, and the Sayros 10 managed to maintain this temperature for a full minute. Meanwhile, the Sayros 10R reached a slightly higher peak temperature of 138 degrees Fahrenheit. However, it performed differently, maintaining hot water for only 23 seconds of the three minute wash cycle. Both docks are designed to dry the mopping pads after a wash cycle. 
The Cirrus 10 is rated to reach 140 degrees Fahrenheit, but in my test it only achieved a peak temperature of 115 degrees after several hours. Similarly, the 10R with the rating of 131 degrees Fahrenheit only reached a peak temperature of 111 degrees Fahrenheit. In terms of drying performance, the Cirrus 10 took a full four hours to completely dry the mopping pad, though the dock sink was dry just after three hours. The 10R was faster, taking only three hours to fully dry both the mopping pad and the dock sink. Let's test the auto empty systems, starting with the Cirrus 10 and a completely full dustbin of dirt and debris from my house. After one auto empty cycle on the dock, the results were impressive leaving only a small amount of debris in the far corner of the dustbin. Next, I tested the 10R, which has a different design of the dustbin, but the same capacity of just 270 milliliters. After completing the auto-empty cycle, the dustbin was fully emptied, though the filter wasn't as clean as the Cerro's 10. Both docks produce a similar noise level of around 71 decibels during their auto-empty cycles. Now that the tests are complete, I'd like to share some of my less favorable observations about these two robots, starting with object avoidance, specifically their handling of cords. After reviewing my video footage, I found numerous examples of the tin getting tangled in cords around my house. It frequently wrapped cords around the side mop, requiring manual intervention. In contrast, the 10R was less prone to getting stuck on cords though there were several close calls. Thankfully, I never had to rescue it, though. One issue that I noticed with the tin is that the side mop tends to ride up on floor moldings in my home, causing the main mop pad to lift. This results in areas along the edges of rooms being missed during the cleaning cycle. The 10R does not have this problem, but I found that when the water output was set to the highest level, its mop pads began drying out after about eight minutes. Achieving a heavy water output on the tin requires turning up the vibration intensity of Viberize, which is extremely loud at its highest setting. Here, take a listen. When it comes to lifting the mop pads, the 10R has a clear advantage as it can lift them significantly higher. Fortunately, both robots allow you to detach the mopping pads and leave them at the dock. The 10R does have a worse design dustbin. It consistently leaves open space at the end of the dustbin, a design flaw first seen on the Curevo Master. Additionally, its filter clogs more easily compared to the 10. While the 10's dustbin is small, its design is far superior. So which robot navigates better? It's a tough call as both performed well overall. However, I encountered more unusual issues with the Cerro's 10R. At times, it would get stuck in one area, sometimes freeing itself eventually, while other times requiring a reboot. I suspected this is due to a new navigation system from Roborock. The 10, on the other hand, is remarkably reliable, which isn't surprising given its use of the top-mounted 360-degree LiDAR. That said, Starsight does look quite impressive when viewed through an IR camera. Moving on to the docks, I prefer the 10R's dock as it requires minimal maintenance and just occasionally removing the dock tray with nothing to clean inside the dock itself. Unfortunately, that's not the case with the 10's dock, which requires cleaning inside the dock. It's less than ideal. In my testing, I also found the 10's dock uses on average 50% more water than the 10R's dock. And this is quite substantial, and it means it also consumes more cleaning solution as well. One thing I do like about the 10's dock is its appearance. I'm not a fan of the mirror finish on the 10R's dock, and much prefer the clean look of the hidden water tanks on the 10. There are several shared features between these robots that I'm not particularly fond of, starting with the decision to use a lifting side brush. Roborock has disabled the side brush on carpets, which I understand some users might prefer. However, I think it would be better to follow Dreamy's example and offer users the option to enable it. On my 10 unit, the side brush has broken and no longer lowers. I've been informed this issue was limited to pre-production models and has since been resolved, and I haven't seen any complaints online, so I think it is just my model. Roborock should be sending me a new one soon, and I'll be sure to test it out. 
Both models offer warm water tank refilling, so I decided to test their effectiveness. To begin, I drained the onboard water tanks by mopping my floors for 20 minutes. Before departing the dock, the tanks were refilled with warm water. Initially, the pads retained some of the warmth from being washed in hot water, but this quickly dissipated. After just five minutes of mopping, the pads had cooled to the room temperature. While warm water is clearly being dispensed onto the tops of the pads as seen here, it seems to lose its heat by the time it fully penetrates them. I continued testing for an additional 15 minutes each, but the bottoms of the pads never regained any warmth. Unfortunately, there has been no improvement to the frequency at which the swing-out side brush deploys under furniture and cabinets. The only time it seems to come out is in 90-degree corners in your house. This is a common complaint online, and I wish Roborock would address it, especially since there's an advertised option in the app to enable this feature. Both models have the advantage of low height, allowing them to clean under furniture, which is a great feature. However, I must warn you, both robots frequently got stuck in various places around my house despite their sensors, and both now have scratches on their lids as a result, as it's just something to keep in mind. On a more positive note, both robots deliver excellent above-board cleaning performance, a hallmark of Roborock. They also come with a very good app. One notable new feature is the ability to set mixed pattern cleaning which allows the robots to clean each room in random patterns. The Duo Divide brushes along with the side brushes handle hair tangles exceptionally well, and the side brushes have longer bristles, which improves their reach. While mapping my house, both robots accurately identified several pieces of furniture and even captured numerous photos of my pets while cleaning. Neither robot misidentified objects to avoid, which was an impressive feat. Both models are relatively quiet in vacuum mode, with the 10R being slightly quieter than the 10, likely due to a smaller vacuum motor. The 10's battery life was well above industry average, making it a strong option for larger homes. Both robots feature the same adapt lift chassis, first introduced on the Curivo curve, enabling them to handle high thresholds effortlessly. I was also pleased to see that both robots perform well on my black rug, a new test that I plan to include in future reviews. To wrap things up, which one would I choose? I'd give a slight edge to the 10R. It offers a better overall mopping system, an easier to clean dock, and slightly improved object avoidance. I also suspect that Roborock might be transitioning to this system for future robots, but only time will tell. While the 10 does have marginally better performance in cleaning, the 10R is still a strong contender. A few years ago, Roborock began releasing a wide variety of models. If you've seen my QRevo comparison video, you'll know what I mean. Perhaps the idea was to create a model for every preference, but I believe this has made their lineup more confusing for the average consumer. It seems that prioritizing quantity has made it harder to develop one perfect robot for the masses. Between these two, I suspect the Saros 10 was intended to be the flagship with its premium look and better specs. However, the Saros 10R has proven to be a worthy rival for the flagship title. Unfortunately, neither robot is perfect, so it ultimately comes down to which one suits your home better. If you don't have floor moldings like mine and don't mind spending a little extra time on your knees cleaning the inside of a dock, the Saros 10 could be a better fit for you. That said, both models come with their own set of pros and cons, and I hope I've helped outline those for you in this video. I'd love to hear which one you would choose, so leave a comment below. This won't be the last time you see these Saros robots on my channel. If this video helped you in any way, please consider subscribing to my channel. Links to both of these robots are in the description below. I've got plenty more content coming out soon, including the new Dreamy X50 review, so stay tuned. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.